Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Luke chapter 17 and I'll be reading verses 11 through 19. And this is what it says. And it came about while he was on the way to Jerusalem that he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten leprous men who stood at a distance. And they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And it came about as, as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Were none found who turned back to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Pray with me. Lord, this great day of, of giving thanks, this great day of giving praise, this great day of giving honor and glory to you, may it not pass us by because inside our heads we're, we're busy making lists and thinking about where we are ought to be and what we ought to do and what we ought to say. Lord, may this time be yours. And in it, may we give gratitude, praise, and worship to you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. When Mark Twain was at the height of his career, he was earning the incredible sum of $5 a word. He was writing for Harper's Weekly. They were paying him $5 a word. Well, one joker wrote him a letter, enclosed in it a $5 bill, and said, Dear Mr. Twain, do you have a good word? Well, Mark Twain took a single sheet of paper, and across the paper he wrote, Thanks, and mailed it back to the guy. <laughs> well, thanks is a good word. And thanks is the word that separated this one leper from the other nine. That word of thanks is the reason that we have a story right here this morning. That word of thanks, that word of, of gratitude. The story begins with Jesus and his disciples heading toward Jerusalem, and it says that they were between Galilee and Samaria. That's just code for they were in the middle of the boondocks. They were out in the middle of nowhere. That's, that's one of the ways we know they were in the middle of nowhere. The other way is they came upon ten leprous men. Now, if you had leprosy, you weren't going to be anywhere near the city. The law made sure of that. The law made sure that you were pushed out of your family. Even if they wanted to, to include you, you were pushed out of your family if you had leprosy. You were pushed out of the city, and if you saw anyone, even at a distance, you were required to, to put your hand over your, your mouth and shout, unclean, unclean. Six feet was way too close. You needed to be shouting a distance away. So here are ten of them who they found each other out in the middle of nowhere. 
and they shout out to Jesus. Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. In other words, don't you care? And the word comes back in a clear and resounding way. Go show yourselves to the priest. And along the way, while they were going, that's when they were cleansed. And one of them turned back to give thanks, to give thanks to Jesus. And that's what I want to talk about this morning, that good word of, of thanks. And the first thing that I want to talk about is give thanks where you are. Give thanks where you are. Sarah Brethnock, in her little book, Simple Abundance, talks about a time in her life when she was angry. She was angry and envious. She says she was a workaholic and a perfectionist. She said that she compared herself to others and she resented anything that was missing. And that she became so angry that she knew that something had to change in some way. Well, one day she sat down to, to write down all the things that she was thankful for. She wrote pages, over 150 things that she was thankful for. And she said at the end of that little exercise that everything didn't change, that the anger didn't suddenly become gratitude, but she was knocking on the door of something important. So the next day, she chose to write down five things, five things that she was thankful for. And the next day the same, and the next day the same. And it was in this, this act of giving thanks, right where she was, every day, that her heart began to change, that the anger began to fall off, that the perfectionism began to soften, comparing herself to others, and always being not enough, began to transform that it was in the thanks, that it was in the praise, that it was in the, the worship that she, she began to be made whole. Lisa Truett Irby from Cleveland, Tennessee, I, I guess in East Tennessee they call it Tennessee, <laughs> from Cleveland, Tennessee, told the story about reading one-on-one -on -one with a child and it was, the child was six years old. She was learning to read. And as she, the little girl was reading, she would help her along. And the little girl encountered for the first time the words, thank you. Oh, she came to the word and, and she stopped. That's when Lisa said, thank. Well, the little girl didn't keep, keep on reading. She, st she stayed there. So with a little more emphasis, Lisa said, thank and that's when the little girl said, I am thanking, I am thanking. Well, southern accent or not, there's a big difference between thank and think. And too often, the, folks believe that they're, they're demonstrating an act of thanks when, when they only think it. Or when we only feel it. No doubt those other nine were thinking and feeling thankful, but only one turned back. Only one demonstrated the act of, of giving thanks, of giving thanks right where he was. And the way the Apostle Paul puts it in Colossians 3.17, and whatever you do in word or deed. Now, it's not whatever you think or whatever you feel. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to Him, to God the Father. That it's, it's what we do, not just what we think. It's what we do, how we demonstrate that thanks. And, and we first turn it to, to Jesus Christ. Give thanks. Give thanks where you are. And the second thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is give thanks where you've been. Years ago, my sister and her family lived in Scotland for a year. Her husband won a Fulbright scholarship, and the whole family went to Scotland to live for a year. Well, she would often take her children to the nursing home. My sister's very musical, and she would play the piano, and the, the children would sing. Sometimes the, 
the people in the, the older adults in the nursing home would, would sing along. Sometimes they'd make requests. Well, one time at the end of a song, this woman yelled out, spam, you know, that meat in a can. And my sister didn't know what she was talking about. Then the woman yelled it out again, spam. Well, my sister looked to the nurse, and the nurse just shrugged. And the woman started coming toward her the whole time saying, spam, spam. And then she came and she tugged my sister on the sleeve. She said, you gave us spam. <laughs> well, that's when my sister looked to the nurse, and the nurse said, oh, during World War II, much of Scotland was starving. The Americans airdropped spam, tons of it. And that's what helped the Scots survive during the war. She just found out you're an American. It wasn't that my sister had to hear it. It's that this woman had to, to, to demonstrate it, to give thanks. Now, someone who survived World War II near starvation, there are a lot of the ways she could have responded to her past. It was a bitter time. It was a cruel time. It was a time of suffering. And the temptation to, to look back to our past, especially a past that was bitter and, and hard and cruel, the temptation would be there to be bitter. The temptation would be, be there to, to respond, to respond to the, the hardship and the and the suffering, to the cruelty in a bitter and despiteful way. But that's not what happened. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. That Jesus, he knew hardship, he knew suffering, he knew cruelty. He knew betrayal from his very best friend. And, and it says that he, even though he was tempted, he's able to come to the aid, to your aid and mine. We can't change our past, but we can change the way we look at it. That we can look at even the hard and the cruel time and see it as a time to give thanks. To see it as a time that, that Jesus came to our aid that Jesus can transform even the way we see our past. Even the way we see our past. Give thanks. Give thanks where you've been. It's the Apostle Paul who underwent beatings. It's the Apostle Paul who was shipwrecked. It's the Apostle Paul who was crushed by large stones, literally. It's the Apostle Paul who was imprisoned. And there in prison... Philippians 4.13 said, he wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. He's able to come to the aid, the risen Christ, through his power for you and me and to transform the past. He doesn't change the past, he transforms it. To be a, a way to give thanks, a way to exercise faith. A mark of faith for the, for the leper was to give thanks to Jesus Christ. And a, and a mark of faith for, for you and me is to give thanks, to give thanks where we are and to give thanks where we've been. The third thing that I want to talk about this morning is to give thanks along the way. Barbara Scholes wrote an article for Christian Century. In this article, she talked about a time in her life where she was battling cancer and what it was like having been healed from the cancer as well as the, the difficult battle she went through. In this article, she says that she could identify with the ten leprous men here. One of the things she says that when chemotherapy causes your hair to fall out, it robs you of your energy, and fills your mouth with canker sores, you begin to develop empathy with the lepers. There's no way of hiding the fact that you are diseased. Your cancer walks into the room before you do, and people who know better still flinch as they did before the lepers. 
who were made to live outside the community and to beg for survival. Well, later on, she begins to talk about being healed and that she began to identify with the 10th leper. And this is what she said. She says, like the 10th leper, I never want to lose sight of the miracle of God's grace. Being grateful as I awaken to the gift of each day is the key. It's an act of, of faith that's able to give thanks each day along the way. That it's a gift. It's the gift that, that Jesus gives to, to you and to me. The gift of faith to give thanks along the way. On the cross, Jesus took all those things that would crush and destroy us. He took the anger. He took the perfectionism. He took the competitiveness. Not only that, He took the suffering and the bitterness. He took the past. Not only that, He took the disease. He even took the sting away from death, and He took it on Himself, and He nailed it to the cross to kill it once and for all. And when He rose from the grave, He rose to live His life through you and through me. Then we might demonstrate, demonstrate thanks in the everyday, in the ordinary, along the way. That we might give that word of faith, give that demonstration of thanks. To give to offer that word of thanks and praise and demonstrate that word of thanks and praise to Him. This morning, it may be that you are thankful, you feel it. It may be that you are thankful that you think it. But it may have been a while since you've demonstrated it. That one of the things that this that this pandemic has done is that it's insulated us from giving thanks to others. And for some, that's translated in, it's insulated us from giving thanks to God in worship. That's what we do when we gather together in worship. We give thanks, we give praise to God and we practice it weekly. Well, this pandemic, I think, is, has insulated a lot of people from that. My invitation to you this morning is find a way to demonstrate your thanks. Not just to think it, not just to feel it, but to demonstrate it. It may be in a letter in a letter, the way that Sarah Brethnock did in the first illustration, that right where she was, she began to, to write it. But maybe you write that letter to God, or you write that letter to someone else. It may be in a word of thanks, and you might need to pick up the phone to give that word of thanks. It might be in a gift, a gift a gift to God, a gift to a neighbor, a gift that demonstrates gratitude, a gift that demonstrates thanks and praise. It's a good word. It's a good word to give. And my prayer for you this day, my invitation for you this day, as you do more than think it, that you do more than feel it, that you demonstrate it and give thanks where you are, give thanks where you've been, and you give thanks along the way. Pray with me. Jesus, we certainly need your power, your strength to demonstrate our thanks, especially this time, this day. This pandemic has tended to make us more inward, more isolated, 
and to break that, that, that isolation. It requires that we, we demonstrate our gratitude. Lord, you've been tempted in that which you've suffered, and you're able to come to our aid. You're able to, to strengthen us in ways that, that we can't imagine. Holy Spirit, breathe into us this day at this time and create in us ways, ways to, to demonstrate, to give our thanks to you and to those around us that our lives might be transformed and we be made like you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.